G'day folks and welcome to an Oz Cyclone Chasers Cyclone video update today, the 19th of January 2015. My name's Chris Nitzo. Uh, look folks, this is my second take on this because the first one had a little bit too much excitement and swearing because we just went through a very severe thunderstorm here in Townsville while I was recording it and lightning was flashing all around and the windows were getting blown in and all sorts of rubbish was happening and I was swearing every second word. So, uh, in... All fairness, we probably needed to do this one again. So if I do sound a little more tired this time around, I do apologise. Uh, this update is sponsored by Campbell Scientific Australia, our major sponsor, when measurements matter. And my name is Chris Nitzo. And the big news won't come as too much of a surprise. The cyclone warning has now been has now been cancelled from the Bureau of Meteorology. The low pressure system had moved offshore, uh, probably a little further south than what the Bureau was showing here. Uh, but it had moved offshore. It was hard to locate. It's now going to wash into a bit of a trophy mess by the looks of things. And that is all she wrote, or that should be all she wrote for this particular low pressure system. Looks like no one wants to no one wants to claim lamb. Anyway, you would think with a load pushing this close to the coastline that the, you would be in for some rain. Uh, you would be noth nothing would be further from the truth. At this point in time, the low is expected to drift west. It should remain a fairly decent feature here overnight and into early tomorrow morning, including uh, some fairly strong winds and some heavy rain, particularly to its north. But once we get into tomorrow morning and then further on tomorrow, it'll just weaken out and become part of a much larger trough system in through this region. So, folks, there's not too much more to say about this particular system here, I guess, other than to say it's been one big tease. And I guess what we do need to say is that the computer models did get this right. They, not one of them except for maybe the GFS was predicting this to, to turn into a cyclone, uh, and uh, possibly the Bureau jumping the gun there expecting it to get to Category 2. But anyway, in this part of the world, with all the mining interests and industry interests, uh, we Obviously, the Bureau will always need to err on the side of caution. And so had we got a Category 2 and they were only tipping a tropical low, then there would have been all hell to pay. So I guess it's much better to err on the side of caution there. The convection around the low is not looking too shabby at all. And I mean, as I said, it is, it is one of those systems that is very lopsided. There's almost nothing to its south and heaps to its north. And so once again, if you happen to be north of it, which unfortunately for the Pilbara or the Gascoigne is not going to be the case uh, because the system's going to be tracking in this west-southwesterly direction. Uh, so there, it really has almost zero weather to its south. System is extremely difficult to locate on radar. There, there seems to be a circulation somewhere in there, but earlier today there seemed to be a circulation right on the coast, of, just to the north here of Bidyadanga, uh, and now we seem to have a much broader circulation here. Look, at this stage, it, it's it's likely to just uh, weaken out into a trough system. It does still, can I just say, it does still have, despite the Bureau now saying low, it does still have the potential to uh, to to become a stronger tropical low overnight tonight, and when we when we see these systems pushing offshore like that, they do tend to intensify overnight tonight, uh, overnight uh, and early in the morning, and then weaken out during the day. So look, it still does have, I guess, a very marginal chance of maybe making a borderline cat one, but even then, we would be talking about a system that is so lopsided that it probably wouldn't fit the uh, description for the from the bureau of what a tropical cycle cyclone needs to be. Now, a tropical cyclone would need to have gales wrapping more than halfway around the centre of circulation. Uh, this system looks like it's only, if it does develop any gales at all, it looks like it's only going to be in maybe 20, around 25% of the circulation. So even on a technicality, it's going to struggle to make it into uh, TC status. Over to the eastern side of the continent, and this is where it's all been happening. While our attention's been drawn over to the possible low, this is where things have just been going kazam and bam. We have had thunderstorms everywhere along the coastline, uh, and in the, inside those thunderstorms we've had wind gusts here in Meribara, 95 kilometres an hour. Here in Townsville, my hometown, the reason why I'm creating a second update and the reason for all the swearing in the first update that had to be edited, uh, we got 109 kilometres an hour while I was doing the update. Uh, over in Karanda, we have a video that was shared on our Facebook page. Head over to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash ozcyclonechasers, uh, of a cyclonic microburst that smashed into Karanda uh, earlier on this afternoon. So this part of the world is where it's all been happening. And the reason it's all happening, 
what we have is just this uh, amazing amount of trough systems all over the all over the continent at the moment. We've got one here across southeastern Queensland. Anywhere north and east of that was getting some horrendous thunderstorm activity today. Uh, anywhere to uh, anywhere along this trough line here across far northern Queensland. I don't know if you can really call it a monsoonal trough. It is a trough there, and it seems to be, if it is a quasi-monsoonal trough, definitely very surface-based trough, uh, crossing the coast around Cairns. So that's the that's the catalyst for the thunderstorms that happened in and around Karanda uh, late, earlier this afternoon. If you have a look at the Townsville region, we have a situation where we're trying to get dry air that comes into here, uh, but... It's being stopped by moist air coming in off the Coral Sea. And so what we had is this mix of dry and moist air. So the dry air above the surface, the moist air at the surface. So the moist air and the dry air were mixing. And what we had is a situation where dangerous wind gusts came from the thunderstorms that developed in this area. And there were thunderstorms further down the coast as well. Mackay probably missing out. But really, folks, it was a very widespread thunderstorm activity. Very coastal as well. Anywhere further inland, there wasn't enough moisture. That's all going to change for Queensland. We're going to see a lot more moisture seeping into the state over the next three to six days. And what we're going to see then is an increase in activity a little bit further inland and certainly an increase in the rainfall associated with those systems. Outside of Maribor, which received that 50-odd millimetres from their storm earlier today, uh, we saw fairly light rainfalls across most of the coastal parts of Queensland that did cop storms. So it's only really the severity of the wind and uh, because of the dryness, we even saw hail in, in some of the thunderstorms, particularly around Karanda in, in the far northern parts of Queensland, there was reports of hail. We don't get hail in the middle of January in thunderstorms. We get hail in October and November in the tropics, but we don't get the hail in January. Usually our middle and upper levels are way too warm and way too moist to allow for hail development. Today, because we've got these mixes of dry and moist air, the moist air down below the dry air just above it we've got a situation where the moist air lifts and then is cooled very very quickly as we go through the through the atmosphere because of the dryness above it good old nt piggy in the middle uh, not much happening around nt today so you can see actually just how unexpected some of this storm activity was. Now these are the forecast charts for or the storm probability charts thanks to Brisbane Storm Chasers at bseh.com.au. We can see that the area around Karanda was expecting to see severe storms today as was parts of, uh, or well, I guess the rest of the state wasn't expected to see severe storms, but they did have the chance of seeing storms. And when we get this situation where right along the coast you're the chance of seeing storms, that usually means that there's a lot of dry air in play as well and that's so that's sort of what happened today because we had a lot of that dry air we got that severe activity on days like that it's very touch and go as to whether you will or won't get a thunderstorm and most of the time you won't but on the days that you do things can turn bad very quickly and that's what happened with the storms that hit Maribara, that's what happened with the storm that hit Townsville, that's what happened with a few of the other storms that hit uh, coastal regions of Queensland that aren't as large. Now tomorrow we actually have an increased chance of severe activity shown by the computer modelling. Uh, in and around the central Queensland coastline. A bit less of a chance further north, so we wouldn't expect a repeat tomorrow uh, around the Coranda or possibly even the Townsville area. We would expect a repeat and possibly an increase in thunderstorm, not only severity, but also the scope and the amount of thunderstorms occurring across central and southeast Queensland. Then by Wednesday, the whole eastern half of the state is blanketed with severe thunderstorm potential uh, and certainly just general thunderstorm potential. And then that thunderstorm activity heads further to the west on Thursday and then likely to be back on the coast on Friday. So really it's a very active convective period for Queensland coming up, folks. We'll go into a lot more detail about that in our state video updates for subscribers tomorrow. So tomorrow we're looking at, as I mentioned, an increase here, increased potential of severe thunderstorms across central and southeastern parts of Queensland. Uh, certainly an increase in rainfall, whether or not you get the severe storms is hit and miss, but definitely looking at an increase in rainfall across that district, possibly also moving into southern inland districts. Across the northern half of Queensland, we're looking at uh, a lot more drier air coming into this uh, north Queensland region, and we're looking at the potential here for showers and storms across the far northern parts of the uh, peninsula. 
Also in the Northern Territory, an increase developing here in the Arnhem District of Shower and Storm. And you can see here the tropical low, uh, which could have been a tropical cyclone, pushing out here to the west-southwest, creating rainfall off the coast, but nothing on the coast. As we go to Wednesday, we'll see an increase in thunderstorm potential and activity and, include, and total rain activity across southern and central districts moving further inland as well, as well as moving further to the north. Uh, we'll see a decrease in activity across the NT and possibly an introduction back of activity across the North Kimberley. On Thursday, a big increase in rainfall potential here from anywhere from around about Ingham south to about Rocky or even as far south as Bundy. Uh, and moving west towards Emerald, uh, looking at some big rainfall totals in that region. Uh, and also looking at that activity extending further to the northwest as the trough system deepens and we get this moist northeasterly flow onto the Queensland coast. The Gulf Country also looking pretty active as those northerlies come into that trough as well. So Burketown, Normanton, uh, those areas looking at the potential for thunderstorms. Also Borroloola looking at the potential for some heavier activity. Uh, possibly some increase in thunderstorms across the northwestern parts of the territory as well. Maybe also some showers and storms developing over the inland pillar and Gascoigne, so that could be something to note there on Thursday. On Friday, that shower and storm activity around the Pilbara Gascoigne weakens out. More showers and storms form uh, and, and more general activity forms around the northwestern coast of the Territory. Uh, continuation of fairly active conditions across the Gulf of Carpentaria and similarly a continuation of very active conditions across the Queensland coast. Total forecast rainfall for the week, uh, you're going to see some very, very, very heavy falls developing across parts of the central Queensland region. Uh, anywhere sort of Townsville seems to be the extent of the heavy rain uh, south to, uh, you know, around about Bundy or Gladstone seems to be the ex southward extent of that heavier rain. Uh, all of this rain around the Kimberley would have already formed, or most of it would have already formed by now, so don't pay too much more attention to that. Uh, but uh, also looking at an increase in activity across the northwestern parts of the Territory. Just a reminder, folks, that we do have the uh, do have the potential to see that tropical low off northwest WA continue to rage on a little bit and actually intensify a little bit overnight uh, before weakening completely tomorrow. A reminder also to Oz Cyclone Chaser subscribers, your state video updates will be updated uh, tomorrow for Queensland and tomorrow for Northern Territory and tonight for Western Australia. Thanks for watching another OCC update and we'll talk again for our national updates on Friday. Enjoy the showers and storms if you're in Queensland and parts of the NT and enjoy the little bit of dryness that you're going to experience if you're in the Kimberley and uh, hopefully that will allow you to dry out from the last couple of weeks.